Shelter-in-place orders continue to impact viewing. Roku should be benefiting, but its numbers don't show that. Netflix continues to dominate. Is Disney Plus catching up? And TV news is king, but Fox News isn't benefiting. Let's get started. This is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is April 16th, 2020. I'm going to give you an update on COVID-19 viewing impacts uh, this week, and we're going to start off with Roku. I actually had three sets of data, but we'll start with Roku. Now, Roku gave us a peek at its Q1 viewing numbers, uh, which it won't actually release for another month, but it told us a couple of data points that I think are pretty interesting. Now, Roku should be doing pretty well because, as we know, streaming has increased dramatically while we're sheltering in place, uh, and their numbers hopefully will show this. Well, active streamers increased 3 million in Q1, according to Roku. They now have about 40 million. And streaming hours, they say, uh, is up 50% to 13.2 billion hours in Q1. And now that sounds like an enormous increase and a really big number. But the truth is, when you multiply that out by the number of of active users, that's only about an 8.4% increase quarter over quarter. Why is that increase so small? They should be seeing a really big increase with so many users and it being such a critical device in the US market. Well, there's a pretty good reason that they offer up. They introduced in Q4 an inactivity timer. Basically what happens is if you are watching Roku and you don't touch the remote for four hours, it just continuously streams for four hours, a message comes up and asks you, are you still there? If you do not respond, it goes back to the home screen. Home screen, it stops streaming. Uh, Well, that actually factoring that in into the Q4 numbers showed that actually the number of minutes streamed by uh, each active user declined 1% in Q4 over Q3. So I'm expecting to see a similar impact in Q Q1 versus Q4 because it's available for the whole of that period. Uh, People are still streaming a lot, three hours and 27 minutes, but that inactivity timer is having a big effect. And there's another reason why I think it's having a big effect. I talked to Warren Schlichting, who is the group manager for Sling TV last week, and he, he told me that they have a similar feature, four hour timeout. And they had a ton of people calling in complaining about that timeout. So many people complained that they actually removed it. So clearly it's having a big impact. Clearly a lot of people uh, are streaming a long time and that's in, that should impact viewing numbers greatly. So adding that timer probably did have a big impact on Roku's numbers. Uh, next, we're gonna look at some Nielsen data to try and figure out which services people are actually using right now, uh, which SVOD services they're really using. And what Nielsen says that well, is that on uh, February 24th, the week of February 24th, we were streaming about 130 minutes, 128 minutes uh, of, of streamed video to our smart TVs, our connected TVs, in connected TV homes. Uh, and Netflix had about a 31% share of that. And the other category, well, that had 28%. Now, the reason I mention other is because that probably includes Disney Plus because Nielsen doesn't break it out elsewhere. Uh, and, and actually, other category grew a lot over the last year. Uh, so uh, it was actually a relatively small number and has become a relatively big number, 28%. In fact, the second biggest group in uh, that Nielsen is tracking. Now, fast forward one month, streaming minutes increased 27%, and Netflix actually increased its share to 33%, and the other category increased to 29%. Uh, so I think there's a clearly Netflix, people are loving Netflix and spending a lot of time with it, but I've got a feeling a lot of people are finding Disney Plus signing up and working their way through their Disney favorites. Uh, now, big loser? Well, you could say, I suppose, that Amazon is a loser. They actually lost share from 9% to 7% of total streaming minutes. Uh, but the truth is they really still gained streaming minutes because it grew so much. It went from 10.4 to 11.3 minutes per week. 
Uh, and now I want to turn to Alfonso data. I talked about that last week. Alfonso basically puts uh, technology in smart TVs so that they can track viewing, uh, permission based, of course, and they track 15,000 TVs. Well, they have an update on last week and it looks like TV viewing is settling at a much higher level, 50% higher, uh, 40% higher, according to Alfonso, and news even higher, 50% higher. The big winners in the news category is MSNBC, increased its number of viewers by about 80%, according to Alphonse. So that's a huge increase. And I suppose you could say that Fox News is the big loser because, frankly, it's not got any more viewers than it did before we sheltered in place. But I guess it was the category leader then, so it's probably still doing pretty well. Uh, now, you could also say that the broadcast channels, NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox, are losers because actually viewing of those channels hasn't increased or decreased pre- and post-shelter-in-place orders. Uh, but that's actually a win because, remember, we lost all, all live sports, and many of, the, many of those broadcast stations deliver live sports, and with that gone, well, they have to fill those holes in the schedule. And there's also evidence that some of the things they're doing in place of uh, the studio stuff is having an impact. Uh, basically, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel, rather, Stephen Colbert and Jimmy Fallon are all doing in-home versions of their studio shows. And they're performing great. Jimmy Kimmel's in-home version is doing as well as its studio version in terms of viewership. Stephen Colbert's actually is 10% higher and Jimmy Fallon higher still at 20%. Uh, so that's uh, obviously really having a big impact, a big positive impact on the broadcasters. If you are enjoying this coverage, why don't you come to the End Screen Media website and sign up for our newsletter. You can pick the daily or the weekly and of course, it's free. We'll see you again next time.